Am I the a-hole for refusing to take my ex-wife as plus one to my son's wedding? My son is 22, my daughter is 18. Six years ago, my daughter caught my wife with another man. She told her brother who understood what she had witnessed, then they both came and told me. I verified that it was true, then I divorced my wife. During the divorce hearing, both of them expressed a desire to stay with me, so I was given primary custody, with my ex getting one week a month and she moved in with the other guy. I have done my best to cut my ex out of my life. Our communication is limited to the bare minimum needed to coordinate custody and shared expenses, and I have never talked about our relationship to my kids. Initially, after the divorce, she told me that our kids were giving her hell when it was her custody and that I needed to talk to them. I sat them down and asked if it was true, and they said they didn't want to stay there. But I explained that it would be best for everyone if they remained civil until they turned 18, so we wouldn't have to go back to court. I didn't get complaints after that, so it seemed to be working. When my son turned 18, he moved back in with me full-time and started college. He graduated now and is getting married in a few months. My daughter turned 18 last summer and moved back in with me full-time too. My ex-wife called me today and she started crying saying that she was not invited to my son's wedding. Then she told me that my son hasn't talked to her in over a year. He had still been dropping in after turning 18 to visit his sister sometimes, but eventually stopped doing that too. Likewise, apparently my daughter stopped talking to her after turning 18 too. My ex-wife asked if I would bring her as my plus one so she could see her son getting married. But I told her that if my son didn't invite her, it wasn't my place to bring her. Then she started accusing me of turning them against her and threatening to take me to court. I just told her that there was no more custody agreement to take to court since both of them are above 18 and hung up. I sat down with both of them later and asked them if they had cut contact with their mother and they both admitted it. I explained to them that they did not need to do that for my sake and I still recognize she's their mother. But they both said they had talked about it a lot and their plan was always to hold out until they were 18. But they had no desire to be around her or the other guy because she had destroyed our family. I told them that they're adults and if that's their decision, I won't pressure them to change it. I was telling my sister what happened and to my surprise, she said my son wasn't being fair and I should make him invite his mother to the wedding. Am I the a-hole for refusing the attempt? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. She had six years to figure out how to at least repair enough damage that her kids wouldn't go no contact the moment they were able. Sounds like the opposite happened. Not the a-hole. Your son should consider hiring security to ensure she doesn't crash the wedding or even come as your sister's plus one. Not the a-hole, but your sister is. I don't know what is with people pushing family members to reconcile simply because they are blood-related, but it's something that needs to stop. People are allowed to choose who they want in their lives. And just because someone helped create you, doesn't mean you have to choose them. You should forgive family when they do something inconvenient or annoying. You can forgive family for doing something mildly stupid or embarrassing and they're sorry. But a-holes, especially unrepentant ones, do not get a free pass just because you're related. Not the a-hole. It seemed like you did your best to encourage them to have some contact with their mother. But they are adults now and can decide whether they want to or not, and they clearly decided. Next story. Am I the a-hole for insisting on meeting in public for custody exchanges? I, 31 male, am divorced from my ex, 33 female, for several years now. 50-50 custody of my two children, 13 male and 9 female, though it's defaulted to me having them 80% of the time since the divorce. The past few years have been littered with false CPS reports and them coming to my house talking to my children. Just for a few weeks to go by and everything is closed and we move on, just for it to happen again. Then, we moved a few months ago. I disclosed my address to the court, slash, and all parties involved except my ex. Since we moved, the CPS visits have stopped completely. But I keep in touch with a caseworker who's helped me with finding my son help with his mental health. Everything has been kosher for months. We've been using the school schedule for custody exchanges as it makes things easier. Then, I recently found out from my niece, ex's Bayou family, that my ex weaponized CPS to make my life hell. So now with a holiday, MLK, landing on an exchange day, my ex is demanding to drop them off at my house. I've told her we can meet at a police department and do a secure exchange. There's marked parking spots with surveillance cameras and everything, and she's refusing saying that I'm hiding things and she just needs to know. 
Am I the a-hole for insisting on all meetings and interaction be through monitored channels? Not the a-hole, and that is a very smart thing to do. Make sure you let the caseworker know that CPS calls coincidentally ended when the ex didn't know where you were. When you meet at a police department, make sure you don't go straight home. She or one of her friends may be following you to see where you live. I wish you the best. We're going grocery shopping first and maybe a pack of magic cards for my son. I considered I may be followed already, but I really do appreciate the forethought. If the kids have cell phones, check the location permissions in apps like Find My iPhone or any social media with location sharing. Location services are only on for Google services which is connected to my account so I can find their devices. Had an incident where we had to find his phone by a friend's house last year, and since then I've been meticulous. Not the a-hole. Your ex has proven her egregious use of CPS, that she cannot be trusted. She is not looking out for your children, she is looking for ways to hurt you. Since this in turn hurts your children, continue to protect both of them and yourself. Keep meeting in public and keep your address private as long as possible. If there is any way to file charges against her or to get her to face consequences for her actions, please do so. Your ex is not only hurting you, but also children who genuinely need the intervention of CPS whose time and resources your ex continues to misuse. Unfortunately, misusing resources with CPS isn't chargeable because it's not emergency services. This is pretty much verbatim what the police department told me, but I'm pretty sure the officer just didn't want to get involved. Not the a-hole. I would normally say exes should know where one another lives, but this is no ordinary case. Keep meeting in public. When she complains, ask her what she is hiding. I actually just texted her this, and she responded with, whatever. So, I'm 99% sure this is a game to her. Next story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to let my brother be part of the family business? First, some important info. I, 44 male, have a younger brother, 41 male, and we are the only children. Also, we are not from the US or any Western country. My father passed away almost 10 years ago. Since our mother was also dead, we divided his estate equally. His estate was a farm of 12 hectares, 30 acres. Back then, it had a house, a barn, a pond, wheat fields, and olive fields. We were both working office jobs in the city and did not want to be farmers. But after my dad died, my wife convinced me to quit, buy out my brother, and start a business with her, as she had degrees in business and hospitality while I was working in accounting. And that's what I did. I bought out my brother at market price. After that, my wife and I transformed the farm, got government subsidies to make our farm more sustainable, transformed the area by the pond into a garden and romantic strolling route and a fishing spot. The closest farm plots were made into a pedagogic farm, and some made available to guests to rent, built small houses, built a stable and bought some horses. We made it into a retreat where you can either spend a day, act as a farmer and have some authentic food, or rent a cabin and try to farm life. The rest of the farm was left to farmhands. Since we are barely two hours outside city limits, it became a booming business. We were booked solid all year. We have schools coming for tours, activities every weekend, couples throwing their weddings here. And after the first five years, we were able to pay off our debt and are making great money. My brother used his money to buy a house, two cars, and on his children's schooling. And they are living well. I would say upper middle class by my country's standards, but nothing like me and my family. Now he says that he wants in on the business, that what he was paid was not fair. I told him no, that he got what his land was worth back then. Now he is no longer talking to me and he is the only family I have left. So am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. He got market value for his half. He used it up while you invested your time and money and now you are getting your return on investment. No need to feel guilty. Right. If it's the other way around and Opie's business tanked, he would not have the right to ask his brother for money because he overpaid. Good on you, Opie. His jealousy is not your responsibility and you can focus on the family you have and not the family who does not want to be there. Not the whole. The only way I could side with your brother would be if you took advantage of his grieving and bought a share. I do doubt this as a possibility, considering it must have taken some time for your wife to convince you to give up your career, to suddenly become a farmer. Also, it's been 10 years, and he hasn't mentioned any regret during that time. I think it's clear your brother is having money troubles or perhaps a midlife crisis. 
Either way, he got a fair deal for his share. If he wants back in, he can offer to repurchase his half. Opie says his brother is upper middle class, so I think it's regret for missing out on the opportunity. If Opie never told him he and his wife had big plans when they bought out the brother, I can see why he feels a little resentful. That's pure speculation though. I ask about it elsewhere so maybe Opie will clarify. But brother wasn't forced to sell. I told him about our plans, but not in detail since we only had vague ideas then. Not day Hall. If he had invested his half of the money into literally anything else, would he share the fruits of that investment with you? I don't think so. You had all the work transforming the place and you had all the risk of it not working too. Also, it definitely sounds like you invested some of your own money too to make all that possible. He wants all the fruits of the labor without doing any of the labor. I get that you don't want to lose him, so maybe there is a calm way to talk about all of this? With a mediator present or something like that. He needs to understand that you invested the money and succeeded. But I mean, you could have failed too. And if you did, would he just give you money from his half? Last story. Am I the a-hole? Active duty sister-in-law is mad her brother and I are having another baby. Background. My sister-in-law is a divorced single mother to a two-year-old and is on active duty. She used to have friends that she would regularly leave her child with instead of us because she also needed someone to feed and watch her three dogs, four indoor cats, and three to four outdoor cats. We watched the animals and a friend watched the kid. On multiple occasions, when this friend would fall through on childcare, she would call us the day off, and we would rearrange our lives, fight traffic, and get her kid because we wanted to help. When she has long underways, we made it clear we cannot watch her kid because my husband is also active duty in our work. I cannot drop my own kid off at school and drive 45 minutes to an hour across town to the military base and fight traffic to drop hers off and then get to work on time. Her child goes to the military base daycare facility, while my child goes to a public school a 10 to 15 minutes from my house in the opposite direction of the base. His hours don't always allow him the ability to drop her kid off and pick her up. As for the current situation, my husband and I invited my sister-in-law and niece to our child's birthday party on Saturday. We also informed her we were newly pregnant again and mentioned that we had not told my in-laws yet. We assumed she would be excited to be an aunt again. She initially agreed, but my husband and I both noticed a tone change on the phone. We both assumed she had been just annoyed at her little one, since we could hear her trying to shop with her when we called. Later in the evening, she texts my husband and says she isn't coming to the party. He asks why, and she states that we had struggled to help her out with her child and having her a few times a week, but now we're having a whole baby we need to care for 24-7, and that she's hurt and needs some space and time. Of course, I personally could not leave this be, and let her know her comments were selfish, and did not depict the entire picture since we have repeatedly cared for her child on numerous occasions, sometimes with no notice. We have also cared for her animals. It has been made very clear I logistically can't drop ours off and hers off on two different sides of town. We have also cared for her animals. She's a 15 to 20 minute one-way drive for us, and sometimes we made multiple trips a day to her home to care for the animals. She snapped at my husband over text. She was angry he had told me what she had said. My husband explained to her that I asked why and that he does not lie to me, so he told me what was going on. He then had a bad feeling at that point and called mother-in-law, only to find out that my sister-in-law had called and told her we were pregnant. My husband is also livid, she told my in-laws about our pregnancy before we could. We were planning on announcing the second one in a cute way, and she's told that from us. Am I the a-hole for saying something to my sister-in-law to spark off this craziness? Should I have let it be? Just wondering what this woman's plan was when she decided to have a kid. Not the a-hole. She had a husband but got divorced, took all five animals they had at a time, one that I know she got after she was speaking with a lawyer to get divorced, then continued to get more animals. I'm not sure on the plan either. All that on top of being on active duty? Shaking my head. Definition of biting off more than she can chew. The hubs and I discuss this exact thing regularly. It's impulsive and doesn't make sense. I have a few animals as well, but I work from home and I'm almost always at home. Lol. The animals are my quirky co-workers at this point. Good grief. I am a single mom with zero family around. Having any help at all would be amazing to me. Your sister-in-law sounds so entitled. Let your mother-in-law handle her and you guys enjoy the new addition to your family. Not day whole. Thanks. 
We are super happy. I respect the single mom's struggle as I do it when the husband deploys. My house gets a little messy. My Yorkie's grooming appointments get a little infrequent. But my kid is clean, fed, and happy. And I'm making it work. I generally don't ask others to help me because I also don't have a large support system here. Talk to the ombudsman at your husband's command. They'll help you meet other wives and set up a support system to help while your husband is deployed. That's their job.